Hi there guys and girls and welcome to Efla442. My name is Ben Efla and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to run your own bucket server. Also this will show you how to update your bucket server to the most recent. First things first you want to find where your .minecraft folder is located. So you want to go down to your start button and in there you want to type in percent sign app data percent sign. That will open up your roaming folder where your .minecraft folder is located. As you can see my Minecraft folder is pretty much empty. That's because I've done a clean install to make it as least confusing as possible for anyone that's new to creating a bucket server. Because as we go through this tutorial, you'll see extra files and things getting populated in this folder. So to make it easy, start off with a fresh install. On a side note as well, if you're just using this tutorial to update your server, please be aware that if you have any mods or plugins, you will have to also update them. Meaning if you download Craft Bucket 1.7.9 or 1.8, and you're running world edit 1.6.4 there's a high possibility that you'll have issues and conflicts and things and it won't work so make sure you update everything at the same time the page i'm on just now is the bucket website for downloading craft bucket which is to run your bucket server there'll be a link in the description for uh, this link that i'm on we're going to download the development build for 1.7.9 since it's the most recent at this present time so what we're going to do is we're going to keep the file we're going to let it download and then once it's finished downloading we will right click and go to file, open file location meaning it will open up my downloads folder so I can easily locate the file and pull it to my desktop. As you can see though there's also extra letters and numbers and things after the word craft bucket and I've also got a thing that says dot jar so don't be worried if you don't have the dot jar at the end you may just have craft bucket with all the extra information with no dot jar that's only because i have an option that shows me what files i've got open you know it's a like a thing that windows does where it shows you the type of file it is but don't panic if yours just says craft bucket and has everything except the dot jar you've downloaded the correct folder what you want to do is delete everything after craft bucket so your thing just says craft bucket you want to put in your dot minecraft folder and that's you pretty much now got a bucket server but what you need now to run this dot jar file is a file called a bat file and this code here lets you make one what you want to do is you see this is the this code's in the description box so all you need to do is do copy and paste out of the description what you want is to make a text document within your dot minecraft folder the same place you put your craft bucket jar file and it doesn't matter what you name this because you'll be deleting that text document what you want to do is copy and paste from the description box the code and paste it in to your text document that you've created and then go to file and save as as you can see it's going to be saving it in the dot minecraft folder and we want to call it something we're going to remember such as run bucket that's that means when we see it we'll know what it does and now what you want to do is at the end of our title you want to add a dot and then the word bat b a t so it should read run bucket dot bat you can do save I can close this and I'll show you. We don't need the text document now because we've actually now, as you can see below it, we've got a run bat file. And that run bat file will run our craft bucket jar. Now that we've done all the setup for running a server, we'll now get our Minecraft ready for us to join our own server. So as you can see, I'm just going to launch this up and we will make sure that the Minecraft version is going to be 1.7.9. And oh, as you see, there's also files populating. So there we go, one, Minecraft 1.7.9 will do play. As you can see I've left the window on the side open so you can see files populate because as we go through this process you'll notice more and more files get added. We've got a multiplayer and as always if you're going to join a server or add a server it's the same process. You're writing a server name so I'll go for Ben's server and then for our server address for our bucket server we want to find what our IP is so we go down to the start menu type in CMD which stands for command and you have a command window pops up and we want to type in IP config and we're going to look for our IPv4 address and in my case it's 192.168.1.3 so I'm going to type that in and what will happen is we still won't be able to join the server because there's no server running but you can see that's it now added so now what we want to do is we can, I'll close the command window I'm now going to cancel out that and I'm going to run our server. Now what will happen is because it's the first time we've run our server, it's going to create a world and that world will be called world. That's the default name that Minecraft gives your world. So we just need to see it all load up. It'll start populating in the .minecraft folder. You probably saw a lot of files got created there. That's 
all because we're running our server now. And we'll wait till this gets to 100% and then we'll go back to multiplayer and join our server. Right, that is it completed. So now when we go to multiplayer, you can see that it's now green, we can now access it. It's obviously set to 20 people who can join me if they want to play with me. And there we are, this is the server online. And what you can now do is make any type of world you want because the files that have been created in our .minecraft folder that are a server's property folder and that server properties folder allows you to change your name, change your world type, add parameters if you want to, to play a UHC you can make a natural regen turned off and all these things, you do it with command blocks but you can also do, you have to enable command blocks in your server properties, you've got a whole load of things you can now do and experiment with if you've enjoyed the video please hit that like button, don't forget to share it and as always, I've been Ben and you've been awesome.